Hello guys and girls, welcome back, it's Essek Hydra here. Today's video is going to be another informative one, this time looking at the skill points within Inquisitor Marty, and I'm going to talk you through my suggestions for your first 15 skill points and where to put them. Now, I'm not going to give you a static cookie cutter build, I'm just going to give you options and it's completely up to you how you spend them. And hopefully some of you guys that are watching that don't have the game yet, this will be a nice opportunity for you just to see how the skill customization works in the game and how you can make your builds more or less effective and somewhat personalised. So without any further ado, remember like, remember to subscribe to the channel, I'm so super happy to be at a thousand subs, it's awesome, and uh, hopefully here's to 1500 before Christmas. Right, so to kick things off, I'm going to start with the skills that anyone can use. There are two types of skills. There are weapon-specific skills, and there are skills that you can just slap on any character, and they will be useful. So the ones I would start with for anybody skills are typically in the defensive tree. My favourite, uh, without any doubt or without any question, is optimal concealment. 20% damage reduction while in cover. Now, they, you can be shot from any angle whatsoever. This will just give you 20% less damage taken while in cover, and it gives you an extra little bit of incentive to use the cover system. Hey, not everyone has to use it. Obviously, this isn't going to be particularly good for a melee class, but it is quite a nice skill. Moving over to the other side here, now not so good for a squishy assassin, but 20% damage reduction bonus from your armor. So if you've got 40% damage reduction from your armor, it's going to give you 48%. So if you're an assassin with 8% damage, it's maybe not quite so good. The assassin armor with stealth attached to it is still fairly high in mitigation, so you'll get another 4% damage reduction from this. It's something to think about. It's fairly good, fairly situational, but if you're having trouble with survivability early game, I do think it's worth it. So far, four points in, and we've got two very tanky, tanky options. So Moving over to the hit point tree here, we I would say some characters will get some benefit from this. 20% hit point regeneration when your health gets low. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but you combine that with a few other skills with an inoculator, 20 hit points per second, it can be the difference between life or death, and certainly the point for 150 bonus health certainly not wasted. Now moving over over to here as well, um, you will also have some other ways of getting more health, another 10 health while on the move. Again, so if you're running away from an enemy and you have these two skills, that's 30 health per second. And it's not too bad, they're not earth shattering, but if you're looking at the hit point tree, obviously picking up the hit points are pretty useful. Um, but those two skills are of some use as well. Now the other one I do think is a little bit stronger in this tree is trauma control, which is plus 20 damage reduction that's not percentage, that is just plus 20 damage reduction, so 20 shaved off of each hit you take, or at least that's what the tooltip implies when your suppression status is red. So if you're getting low on health and you're already a tanky character, this is definitely something to think about picking up, but really, unless you're getting low on health, it's obviously not going to do too much for you. Now, what I think I'll do is also cover the last sort of situationals, which are in the support, debuff, and maybe movement tree, and then we'll go on to the weapon-specific stuff. So in the support tree, something that I quite like is the focus point heal over here. So 0.5% heal of your maximum health, sorry, per point spent. So quite good for assassins, quite good for crusaders. If you don't have an inoculator up, it can quite easily give you 20%, 50% of your life, depending on what you're using, obviously. But it turns your armor ability into another heal, which I think is not too bad for only three points invested. Now, if you were the Crusader, um, this is from the Assassin's point of view, but the Crusader has an ability here which gives you more focus regeneration, which is also, I think, quite a good one. And the armor abilities are quite useful I like it anyway, it's not mandatory. Inoculator's healing 20% more up here as well, pretty good one, one to look out for. Now some of you will be thinking, hey Hydra, you're just putting like three points into the edges of every tree here, what's going on, why aren't you building into the middle? Well in truth, early game I think the worst thing you can do is 
go for one tree and try and chase the middle option. Generally speaking, you're getting very little bang for your buck. 20% focus on an inoculator use is pretty good, but having to spend about 20 points to get there is not that great. You can get one of these sort of effect abilities for every three points, sometimes every two points you spend. So for 15 skill points, you can get a minimum of five to ten um, of these effects, which is far more than you would get just from going through one skill tree, and you get to choose which ones mix and match and choose sort of the best options. Now, the debuff tree, well, that's going to be a little bit more... go away. That's going to be a little bit more sort of specific to a weapon. We'll come back to that. The suppression one is a fairly generic one too. Anyone can pick this up. And the best ones in here, well, we have 10% hit point regenerate again. Not amazing, but not too bad. Any single point you put into this tree is generally not wasted. So it's simply a tree where any point, 1.5% damage if your suppression's green. If you're using cover, it should always be green. Pretty good. Damage reduction as well, always pretty good. We'll move on from that one because generally that one is all just pretty good moving on from here now and we will move through the through the trees slowly um, dropping below 20% hit points resetting the skill of any movement skills is nice if you're going for a melee build with a charge or dash that has a high cooldown because it means if ever you get low you need to jump out you don't have a means to do so it'll instantly reset that ability for you so it's nice just as an extra escape mechanic now I do quite like quickening, skills granting you plus 20% movement speed for 2 seconds. You have to invest quite a lot to get it, but if you're going there anyway and you want to go for sort of some cooldown some cooldown for your weapons, it's not too bad, but it's, it's one to keep an eye out for. Something that I do think is also useful for a tanky character at least, if you're finding that you're getting suppressed very often, especially if you're playing in melee, immunity to slow, stun, shock and freeze when your health is below 20% is fairly useful again just as an extra extra survival mechanic. So thus far you can see there's actually quite a few abilities in this game that really focus on minus 30, minus 20% survival mechanisms. Not too bad. So that concludes the sort of generic ones. Now how to build a character with regards to a weapon. What you need to do is you need to look at the actual weapon, bring it up, and you need to see what is associated with each ability. So I have armor breaking dot and single target. This is where a little bit of work needs to be put in. I could be lazy and I could just go with crit or range damage and that they would all apply to all of these abilities but I equally can take one of the abilities I'd say play with the weapon get used to it fortunately if you spec into tanky stuff by the time you've got used to a weapon you'll know what you want to work for anyway so with a weapon like this maybe it's better to start with just going for the stuff that will benefit most of the ability so if we go back to the skill ranged combat criticals are obviously going to help but it also does have single dps and aim shots associated with it as well so what i'm trying to make sure i'm emphasizing here is there are lots of different options and any single one of these well none of them are really a wrong choice let's go through these and all Order, though and talk about what, what's good now close combat is one of the few exceptions where I feel that there are some that are fairly good like the 7% damage bonus to a single combatant so by the time you cleared all the trash and you're trying to kill a dreadnought that's fairly useful uh, but quite a few of the others I don't know 20% damage when your health drops again not too bad I'd like to keep my health fairly high but that's not too shabby either aside from that Yes, stacking with melee crits, that's more of an end game thing, wouldn't worry too much there. Let's move on to the range combat tree, you can see this is one I quite like. The main players on here are going to be 30% range skill cooldown bonus when fighting from cover. That applies to all of your abilities if they're more than one second, so even, especially sniper rifles and things like that that inherently have a long cooldown, that increases your base attack speed by 30%. Really good ability, really really good. This one here, 10% damage bonus to ranged weapons when there's no enemies nearby. That is perfect if you like kiting, if you want a kiting playstyle, I would definitely suggest that. Moving over to here, 30% reload reduction for ammo fed weapons is always a safe bet. It's always a good one. If you're using any bullet fed weapon, it's going to be of some use. The single DPS tree is perhaps, I think, one of my favourites because of one skill. Every one hit kill restores 10% of maximum health. Now actually how this works at the moment, if you kill a target with a single DPS um, 
ability, it will give you 10% of your max health. And there are not many things in the game at the moment that give you this much sustain. This is incredibly powerful for allowing you to just move through content. So you're, if you're rocking anything and you have an ability you can spam that single DPS, so be it an Exodus rifle, be it a bolt gun, um, I think even a plasma gun would count. I would strongly recommend working towards this because on the way these other abilities aren't too bad either just giving you some extra damage which is fine okay obviously the damage for melee skills isn't particularly useful but you do also get plus five critical hit chance for the first hit always nice you might kill them in one hit and considering you're only going to shoot the average enemy twice anyway maybe once um, that's fine for me it's not amazing but it's not too bad and five percent damage for all skills for more than one second cooldown remaining that perfect for sniper rifle is really really nice moving over to here there are a couple of others that aren't too bad 10% damage when an enemy is low on health I mean that's fine for finishing a dreadnought but it's not amazing this is one of my other favorites I turned it off at the moment but if you're ever doing more than 50% health with a single target ability you will knock them back so if you like playing against your own difficulty um, if you don't want to ramp the difficulty too high this is really nice because whatever you hit with a single target ability even a bolt gun it will knock them back it looks amazing it makes the weapon feel like it's actually packing a punch and it looks awesome area effect i have to say i've not found that much useful there are general bonuses to the amount of damage it does it's not too shabby the melee ones aren't too bad but really i wouldn't say that this skill has blown me away five percent critical strength is probably the best one i can find um, but there may be some other hidden gems here that i've just not sort of come across yet but i wouldn't go to to, to sort of too overboard with that the physical attack tree is nice as well but it seems to me a bit more of a late game the main sort of shiners here are critical hits dealing a slow to a target which is nice bearing in mind if they have a suppression bar they won't be slowed until they're out of suppression so it may not be as useful quite as you think good for higher difficulty though and physical damage um, applying or sorry crits applying vulnerability is very good as well as the final one giving where are you you're somewhere here uh, the final one giving extra damage percent so basically if you're with a physical physical weapon with vulnerability uh, sorry with a high attack rate if you're with a let me start that again if you're using a physical weapon with a high rate of fire this is actually one of the few trees I'd say short max it out because you could quite easily go up to 50% damage very quickly. So auto guns, auto pistols, um, maybe even a heavy bolter would do pretty well with this. You could ramp up to 50% bonus damage quite, quite happily, maybe even a little bit more by the time you've done some hits. Obviously, though, you're going to need some critical hit combined to make this work. So by the time you unlock all of this, well, hey, I'm only character level 18 and I've been playing this a while. On that note guys it is being changed the account level speed rate so but hang in there hang in there execution not fully implemented yet it's going to be a case of when you hit someone in melee something comes above their head you press the f key and you execute them that gives you a bonus and this makes the bonuses better we'll we'll come back to a, maybe an execution video looking at those one they're all once they're all out only a few trees left to go aimed shots has a couple of nice ones i think one of my favorites is the fast aim so instead of having to charge an ability for three seconds it reduces it to two seconds now the only downside is you have to invest a hell of a lot into it to actually get there now some of the others are okay 10 percent damage for a headshot not too bad if you just like sniping sort of the elite units and you're playing a lot of co-op maybe not too shabby the other ones are all fine plus two percent damage isn't a bad bonus criticals again one of those trees where you can invest a fair bit if you're going with some of the other stuff like in the the physical attack tree you can pick up a few bits of critical fairly quickly like this one lowers your damage but increases your critical hit bonus um, stuff like that sort of going to be okay just so you can apply the effects that you'll get with critical hit you can also go for the plus two percent with range weapons up here so you get three percent from those two points or you get three percent from melee weapons with those two and another five percent if your suppression status is green not too shabby i mean we're looking at ten percent crit already with sort of only uh five points spent so and we can go up to eight percent with another couple so it's not that bad not that bad 
Damage over time is pretty good. It's pretty good. I don't think the dot damage is amazing though, so for all of these 5%s, which look quite impressive, eh, I, I don't think they're amazing. What does shine though is poisons reducing enemy damage by 20%. That's just the same as, you know, increasing your armor by 20% if you ignore healing as a variable. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Um, I don't know if these stack across players, but I'm hopeful that we can get multiple players applying damage reduction to bosses and things like that. This might be one to work in. Certainly if you're a melee assassin, you want to be working in this, uh, because any build without it, you're going to be taking 20% more damage, and those marauders hit like a truck. The middle one's actually one semi-worth going for, every dot giving you another 10% damage. It wasn't working last patch, it might be now, but we'll see. Heat attacks, another one that you can work into a bit. I wouldn't go right the way up to try and get the sort of all of the giblets here. The main one for me is just energy and heat weapons generating minus 20% less heat. That just allows you to spam attacks a lot longer, especially for the ones that haven't really been balanced yet. Quite a few of them now, you'll never raise your heat bar. So the second one here, which gives you a bonus to damage when you're over 50% heat, just take into consideration what weapon you're actually using because quite a few weapons will never actually get the bonus from this because their heat management is just too good. Some weapons though, the heat management is terrible but so bad to the point you'll only get one or two shots off with the extra damage anyway but maybe you could argue that that's still worth it if you're trying to take out an elite before he stomps on your balls and I think that actually covers us. Aside from the debuff tree, last one. The ones I keep an eye out for here are actually some of the miners. 3, 6, 9, 12% extra damage with piercing abilities. So the primary skill on a bolt gun, the Exodus rifle, just about any skill on that. 15% damage flat from 4 points, not too bad. As well as maybe some shock stun durations over here and extra effects. Okay, not too bad for group play. Maybe if you're doing harder level content, you really want to slow down a Marauder that's coming towards you. Just bear in mind that if you're not doing any suppression damage, slow stop shocks, stuns and freezes are going to be fairly pointless on an elite unit. So someone needs to be taking down their suppression for that to actually be of any use. 20% damage after they've been knocked down. Again, fine, but you have to knock them down. Whereas the poison tree, 20% damage reduction just because they're poisoned. So this is fine, but you, it's going to be far more situational. Guys, that actually covers all of the skills that I think are sort of worth using. And yes, although we might be getting the occasional sort of annoying 1% here, 1% there, the, the actual effect abilities I do think have tangible effects on the character i think it's safe to say we can see well we will see a few more skill trees arrive with the psyker perhaps perhaps not um, but i would be hopeful there will be a warp based one it would really not make sense for there not to be one um, but i do really feel that you can customize this i would liken it a lot to path of exile where they've taken that rather complicated tree broken it up into lots of small chunks we're going to be aiming for about 200 skill points in total for a character. That's going to obviously accumulate over multiple subsectors and series. So it, and seasons. Sorry. So it's going to take a long time to get there, but I think it's going to be a fairly customizable feature eventually. And I, I do think that there will be some, some real room to sort of make, make a unique take on something. Now, granted, it doesn't vary your playstyle, but this isn't a review of the game. This is just looking at skills. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it find, I hope you find it useful, and I hope it gives you. Well, some inspiration to make your own builds. Let me know what works for you down in the comments below. Let me know if there are any skills that you think I missed that I glossed over that are really worth using. Guys, once again, thank you so much for liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.